あ皆さんこんにちは、えー、香川博史です、えー、山口洋二という名前であのー、いろいろと本とかも書いてますのでよろしくお願いします今日は私の古い友人でしかもですねコンピューター業界に大変明るくえっ、ー、と昔はねまああの宇宙関係のねプログラミングなんかもなやっていたあのー、マイケルノバックさんとあの久しぶりに会いました。彼は今えっ、ー、とまさにマイクロソフトとかそういうところの関係のねあのいわゆるこうシアトルあのあそこはそこのヘッドコーターですよね。そういう人たちとも関わりながらいろいろな仕事をしております。また彼自身はですね非常にあの民主党のあの支持者でえっ、ー、と今回のあの大統領選挙のことも大変あの興味を持ってました。そういう意味でそういうネットワークについてもお話を伺ってみたいと思います。今後のアメリカのあのいわゆるハイテク産業はどうなるのかなということも合わせて聞いてみたいと思います。Hi, Michael. Hiroshi, good,、uh, good morning to you. Ohayo g o z a i m a s u Late afternoon for you. Yes, it is. Well, here, you know, it gets dark about four o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. So it may be, it may be afternoon, but it's very dark out right now. <laughs> oh, it's already dark in the Seattle.、Yes. You know, like、yes. what time? What time? The kind of sunset time? Well, right now,、um, sunset is about four o'clock. Uh huh. Sunrise is about almost eight in the morning. I see. So, so we have、uh, 16 hours of darkness and eight hours of、uh, sunlight. I see. But、uh, I believe that、uh, you have a sunlight in your mind because you know, the election the result was so, so good for you. Well, I would say that I share with the、um, global sigh of relief that, that mostly is accurate.、Um, mm -hmm. that, um, Uh, the elections were, were sound. The American voters、um, uh, were unanimous. It was the highest turnout in、mm. 100 years.、Mm. We had about two thirds of the voting population actually voted. That's right. And、great. by far the most number of people voted.、Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a really good exercise in democracy. And I'm、um, proud of the country for the Turnout and the results, and even the post results,、um, confirmation of those votes. Well, but uh, uh, Mr. Biden will inherit a lot of debt which Mr. Trump created. Well, when you say debt, you mean financial debt?、Uh, not only financial, but、uh, still society is divided, and、uh, he stimulated that. Also, not only that, you know, I mean, COVID 19 is still quite a pandemic, terrible pandemic. So, Yeah, yeah, well, you know, so the, I think one of the strengths of Mr. Biden,、mm -hmm. uh, President elect Biden, is that he has a 40 year history in, in, in the Senate. And one of his strengths was、um, bringing together both sides of the aisle. And if, and if that was ever needed, I think nowadays that is,、uh, mm -hmm. that is accurate. And so I'm,、um, I have a lot of confidence in, in that. And,、um, Um, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of one of the things that I think、um, this election showed that I think is becoming increasingly important is just a demonstration of the power of storytelling.、Mm. You know, um, um, Mr. Trump was,、um, before he was elected president, he,、mm -hmm. he was a successful. TV star that,、mm -hmm. that portrayed a successful businessman on,、mm -hmm. on TV.、Mm -hmm. And、um, even though his actual business shows a, a history of bankruptcies and closures,、mm -hmm. his 15 year run on television really set a lot of people's mind that he was quite successful.、Mm -hmm. And、um, I think that that. Enabled him to gather a certain following that really、um, listens to what he has to say. And, and he also developed a skill at speaking very simply.、Mm -hmm. And、um, you know, history has shown that a lot of the world's greatest speeches, like JFK's inaugural address or Lincoln's Gettysburg address, were done、um, using simple terms, words of one、yeah. and two syllables mostly.、Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the strengths of,、um, that Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump was able to do、uh, is to continue to speak simply、mm -hmm. and、uh, speak in a way that spoke to a lot of the concerns、um, of a lot of the、uh, 
of a lot of the voters in the United States. So I think that he was able to um, develop that skill into, into four years of a presidency. Mm. Um, well, only... like a, sorry, a simple expression as well as, I mean, good use of the SNS with a simple language uh, may really affect upon, reflect upon a lot of voters. Well, Not you know, just, uh, Biden, Mr. Biden. Well, Mr. Biden, he, he, he is much more relaxed. Um, mm. One of the things that I noticed that he, he did a series of podcasts where he was just able to have a simple conversation mm. with about 10 different people. And his communication style really showed through in, in that uh, mm. format. Mm. And I, I think that the times we have now really calls for someone who... Um, can calm things down mm -hmm. and, and also speak from information that is uh, backed up by um, evidence. Um, I and I think, that, I think that's important that we try to gather a consensus about what is real and what isn't real. You know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's something that we've seen a divergence from. And, um, and I'm hoping that we can see some level of refocus on a, a common understanding of what is actually happening and, and things like global warming and and voting and um a whole range of topics you know so i'm 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 actually quite enthusiastic about um president-elect biden uh coming into term in about seven weeks from now that's great Okay, um, ha, I mean, after hearing that kind of comment, I believe that uh, you are involved in a kind of a high-tech area for a long time, particularly in the computer and also streamings and uh, every kind of a communications, uh, internet communications, you are highly involved. Um, do you have any idea about uh, next four years, maybe in near future also, um, are there any changes of the U.S. kind of industry as well as education field or anything, you know, you are involving, you know, uh, please tell me. Well, one, I think one of the things that we have to think about is the, really over just our careers, the globalization of storytelling and um, fact-finding and, uh, and, and, I mean, early we saw that um, with music, with devices like uh, Sony came out with a device that was really great with music. And, and <laughs> then we moved to CDs and, and now most people down, download the music off sure. of these music sites. Mm -hmm. And of course, you would be well aware of the changes that have occurred in the publishing industry. Of course. Um, and, and I think those same sort, sort of things are being precipitated right now in two areas. One is in education, mm. where um, a, almost a year ago exactly today, we moved up here to Seattle. And this mm. background that I have shows you, you know, the Seattle area with oh, uh, yes. it's a beautiful gorgeous area. weather, but, um, you know, often we have clear skies because it's recently rained. Mm. Um, but the innovation in, when I came up here, I was looking to work with the University of Washington and then Shortly after I arrived, they sent 60,000 students home. <laughs> mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so in higher education, it's really being disrupted and even in, in because of the virus. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, e even, in, even in movie theaters, um, um, one of the major um, uh, movie, movie change uh, like yeah, AMC yeah. Is, is having, is really struggling because people just aren't going there. And some of the movie studios are now announcing that they're going to be releasing their, their upcoming movies, Warner Brothers, their whole catalog of movies for 2021 are coming out both streaming and in box office at the same time. That's tough because, you know, um, bookstore too, you know, I mean, of course, you know, book business has been suffering a long time. However, you know, they cannot have uh, any short, I mean, small size gathering of a kind of a, I mean, reading communities or whatever. So maybe this is the same situation too. Yeah, you know, and so the, 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 
the business model that supported people physically going to one spot to buy a book or pick up a CD or, or even go to a movie are really being disrupted at a phenomenal pace. Mm. Um, and this pandemic has done that same sort of thing in education space mm. and in, um, and in um, well, they used to call them films. Of course, no one shoots on films anymore, so I call them movies or motion pictures. Um, so these these well developed stories that are now uh, deployed globally, I think um, I think you're ra very rapidly seeing the changes in the way those business models are are done. Yeah, um, but uh, you have a lot of connection all over the world, even Africa, about uh, talking about Africa and Bahamas or many places, talking about this kind of a solution for the future. Do you think like after the pandemic, even the same trend can continue? And do you have any solution for that? I, I think it's uh, inexorable. Um, you know, in my, in my career, it's been in a couple of different areas, a lot in high tech. But over the last 20 years, a lot of it has been in the intersection of media and education. Um, started with equal access that now reaches over 100 million people in Asia and Africa um, in both radio and broadcast. And then it moved into the leading digital media college in Silicon Valley for animation and gaming. And then it went down to LA for the only college in the United States that's housed inside a motion picture studio. Mm -hmm. And then we've added, uh, I'm the chairman of the Bahamas Artists Movement in, in, in the Bahamas and senior advisor to the Nigerian film industry and now mm -hmm. actively involved in Puerto Rico. So I, I can see these, these uh, trends occurring that I think, I, I, I don't think we're going to go back. I think there's going to be a continued um, consolidation of storytelling. And um, so I... I when I'm speaking to people in all these different continents and, you know, the, everybody is um, trying to see kind of where are we going to be five years from now? You know, I, I don't, I don't see us going back to the, the, the theater model in the same way that I don't think we're going back to CDs or <laughs> DVDs, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so I think I think theaters will continue, but I think you're going to see the continuing emergence of these major streaming platforms uh, for the distribution of storytelling um, on a global scale. Uh, streaming technology, what is new? Because streaming, I have been seeing the world of streaming long time. And mm -hmm. uh, if you have any kind of specific kind of a trend of the new era of streaming, please let me know. Well, one of the things I think that is important and that really was also shown in education space is that um, a lot of people don't have access to bandwidth to support some of the streaming. Now, of course, in Japan, Japan is one of the best um, uh, countries for high bandwidth media. Mm. Uh, when I'm in Japan, bandwidth is awesome. Okay. Um, but, but for example, there are now about 5 billion smartphones, um, across the planet. And of those 5 million smartphones, only half of them have access to Wi-Fi. Uh -huh. So if, so one of the things that, that was shown in education was that the lack of Wi-Fi was really inhibiting a lot of students from access to these, um, Zoom conversations or Zoom education. Um, and I think one of the things that started mm, three years ago mm -hmm. uh, with Amazon, someone who's pretty well known, his name is Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. the president of Amazon. Mm -hmm. He announced something called bimodal reading, mm -hmm. which is the intersection of ebooks with audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of those is that you now have a platform where you can hear and read at the same time. Um, storytelling, but at low bandwidths. Mm -hmm. I think some of the innovation in the space is going to happen um, when you start thinking about media mm -hmm. specifically for smartphones, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for a smartphone, if you have a smartphone, it's, it's great for music, but for streaming video mm -hmm. um, to half the planet's population that doesn't have Wi-Fi and only accesses it on their call plan, 
that is um, that's that's too much. This is a space and satellite solution too. You know what? There there is a lot of um, satellites that are being launched now for uh, continuous access um, via satellite or very high altitude um, uh, planes that 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 are capable of running on solar power for days. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is a lot of innovation happening in this issue th that I just talked about, which is how do you get um, deployment of the internet to the other half of the, po of the planet's population that don't uh, have good uh, access? I can, yeah, I can see the huge business model in the future, particularly in the education area, which is necessary and indispensably needed in all over the world without any exceptions. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and, and a really good example of that is I worked with a university that, that focused in the area of STEM-based education. Mm. Now, you see this in India sure. Sure. and China and Japan and everywhere. A lot of STEM education is really mostly done in English because the core curriculum of, of, of science, technology, engineering, and uh, mathematics mm -hmm. is... Um, very strict. You know, you have a certain set of terminologies that are standard. Mm -hmm. And of course, a good example of that is um, aircraft. If you want to fly a plane uh, and be a commercial uh, pilot, you have to be able to speak English to be able to navigate around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think that that's an example of, um, of this um, consolidation of media and communication. Um, so, mm. so yeah, I, I, you're, um, you're right. This, mm. this is something that you're going to continue to see. That's good. Thank you, Michael. Um, really great comment. You know, after the election, you must be a little bit relaxed, but please stay healthy. And, uh, <laughs> and also, um, I hope that we can talk about this new technology more in the future again. Yeah, I, I, w I look forward to this is an ongoing, this is an ongoing thing, uh, my friend. And I, uh, I, I'm fascinated that it's occurring at the same time I'm I'm able to continue to be involved on an active in an active way. Um, I think that um, you know I think that one of the things that that we've seen is in this continuation of digital media globally that um, a lot so much of it happens in English, mm -hmm. and I think that both you and I are dedicated to looking at. Uh, English media into places where maybe it's not the first language that is spoken. So mm -hmm. I just want to congratulate you for these series of, of interviews mm -hmm. um, from people around the world that uh, really show this. And um, if there's any way that I can continue to help you to reach, uh, in particular, the, the in Japan, which I just love so much, um, I would love to continue to do that with you. Yeah, of course, I need your technology idea very much. Mm. Thank you so much, Michael. You're and welcome very soon. much. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.